In this video we'll start looking at the bridging uh, between GCSE and A-level with CERDs and this will be the, one of uh, three videos on CERDs and we'll look at the very basics today, understand what they are and then move forward with the um, operations that we would use. Now CERDs are as essentially just imperfect squares. They're rational numbers which means that they can't be put in terms of a fraction. Let's look at an example now. Let's get up a a triangle okay this triangle right here is going to give us some uh, side lengths so if I said that this one and this is not to scale three four automatically we should spot if this is a right angle triangle then this one squared plus this one squared is going to be the square of that one so what we would see is that this is going to be the square root of 9 plus 16 and we know that's going to give us root 25 now, root 25 is what we call a perfect, uh, perfect square. The root of 25 is going to give us 5. It doesn't always work like that. And what we often wind up with is what we call an irrational number. And that's a third. Okay? So it's an imperfect square. And we don't truncate our answer. We leave it in what we call exact form. If you're asked to leave an answer or work in exact form, it means that you write it as root 2, root 5. Now what I'll do with this one is the following. I'll say that this one is going to be 1. This one right here is going to be 2. So by Pythagoras, that squared minus that squared is this one squared. So what we've got now, this one is going to be the square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared. So 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. So this right here is going to be root 3. And this is the reason I've done this one is um, because this is one of our special triangles that you'll you'll get used to um, as you move along with your studies. Uh, let's just I don't think we want the right angle over there. So we would write this in its exact form as root three. That root three, if we put that for the calculator, you'll realise that uh, I think it's one point seven one or something. Let's have a look at that. So root three will give us. 1.73 and that keeps going and that is like pi it's in the same way that it goes on and on and on and if you start truncating or wanting to work in decimals then you're going to end up with some messy stuff we leave it in exact form in third form as root 3 root 3 is a third root 2 is a third root 2 is about approximately 1.4 something or other root 5 root 6, root 7, root 8, and we'll look at root 8 shortly. And of course, we then hit root 9, which is going to give us 3, because that is a perfect square. Everything else in between is expressed in third form. Let's look at a couple of the basics of thirds, and then we'll look at some operations. And that was quite nice that we ended up with root 8. Now, root 8 is a third. It's an irrational number, and that's it in its exact form. We can simplify this, though. And when you're asked to simplify a third, so simplify a third, what we need to do is put it in its lowest form. And the whole idea here is to prime factorise. If we think 8 in terms of prime factors is going to give us 2, which gives us 4, which gives us 2, which gives us 2. So as a product of its prime factors, 8 is 2 times by 2 times by 2. So what we could do is rewrite this in the following way. We could write its root, uh, root of 2 times 2 times 2, or in exactly the same way, we can happily write the following. We can split this up and write root 2 times by root 2 times by root 2. These two things are identical. And again, I've used this identity here. These two things are exactly the same. If we think about the following, if I said now the square root of 36, well, that equals 6. So logic says if we have now um, six, six, uh, root 6 times by root 6, we're going to get root 36 or 6. And this gives rise to our first rule, root a multiplied, and I'm using the dot again for multiplication, times by root a is just a. If you square a squared number, a, so if you square a square root, you'll get that number back. So let's look at these two. 
root 2 times by root 2 is 2. So we end up with 2 root 2. So in its simplified form, 8 is 2 root 2. Another way you might want to look at that is keep it all under root, and once you've got a pair, it comes out as a pair. So we would have 2 root 2. So for example, now if we had the following, if we had root 32, then what we know is that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the power of 5, so we could bring a pair out, which would give us 2 lots of root 2 times root 2, uh, root of 2 times 2 times 2, and then you can bring another pair out, and it will give you 4 root 2. And then we're just left in its exact form as 4 root 2. Alternatively, you could view that as root 2 times by root 2, times by root 2, times by root 2, times by root 2, and that will give you 2. That will give you 2. And then we've got 2 times 2 times root 2, which is going to be 4 root 2. And that is simplifying a third. So let's look at a couple of examples. We've just done root 8. Now, root 12 is going to be, if we prime factorise 12, 12 will give us 2, and it will give us 4, it will give us 2, and it will give us 3. So we could rewrite this as root 2 times by root 2 times by root 3. And of course, that is just going to turn to 2, so we're left with 2 root 3. Another way of looking at that, and potentially less favourable, we've got a pair, and they can come out front and multiply this imaginary 1, that, well it's not imaginary, but the, um, the 1 out front to give us 2 root 3. So that's, that's simplifying. Um, and after a while you'll start to spot these. So if we go for root 108, let's look at root 108. You'll start spotting patterns inside these. So 108, if we divide that by 2, we're going to get 54. If we divide that by 2, we're going to get 27. Can't divide that by 2, so we split it by 3 and we get 9. We split it by 3 and we get 3. So we could rewrite this as root 2 times by root 2 times by root 3 times by root 3 times by root 3. That will just give us 2. That will just give us 3. And then we've got the root 3. Be careful here, it's not 2 plus root 3. 2 times 3 is 6 root 3. And that's our answer. And if we put that for a calculator, if we put in now root 108, in its simplest form, it will come up to be 6 root 3. So there we go. They're basic operations. Okay. Now, we'll look at, in the next video, we'll look at some of the properties of certs. I'll give you uh, one other one while we're here. What if we had now the root of uh, 36 over 2, we could write that as root, uh, uh, root 36 over root 2. Okay, and we'll look at this property later. But essentially, when you're simplifying, all you need to think about now is can I prime factorise that? Can I make that easier? Root 50 is a nice one. Root 50, 50 divided by 2 is 25. 25, and that will give us a perfect square. So we're going to have root 5 times by root 5 times by root 2, which is going to give us 5 root 2. So there we go. This is the absolute basics, and you'll probably um, you'll probably spot these a million miles away and be fairly comfortable. As we move on with third work, they will become less and less obvious. Root 200 is a nice one because it's the same as saying root 100 multiplied by root 2, which of course root 100 is 10 root 2. A root is the same as a half power. So if you have x to the 1 half then we could also write that as root x. So in the next video, we'll look at multiplying, adding, subtracting, before we go on to the third one, when we look at rationalising.